Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Wigwam Gaming. Today we're going to review a little game called Pinstripe. Pinstripe is a puzzle solver adventure game with a hearty pinch of platforming mechanics that was recently released out on Steam. Pinstripe was crowdfunded through a Kickstarter campaign which started in early 2016 last year and quickly reached its goal of $28,000 in just a single day. Due in part to the very impressive Tim Burton inspired visuals and the seemingly well fleshed out story, fans flocked to the Pinstripe Kickstarter. The developer Atmos ended up with over a hundred thousand dollars in kickstarting dollars from over three thousand individual backers. Skyrocketing through many of its backer goals, Pinstripe was able to add full voice acting, a new game plus, and even mobile versions coming down the road. But this is certainly a narrative we heard before. Lots of kickstarter dollars and backers don't always equal a good game. Oh, will Pinstripe be the next kickstarter success story? Or forgotten stepchild that you don't really call anymore? Pinstripe is a game that follows ex-minister Teddy and his young daughter, Bo. We follow along with Teddy as he desperately tries to find and rescue his daughter who has been taken by the mysterious man who claims to be God, but is more commonly known throughout the game as Pinstripe. We meet quite the cast of eccentric characters along the way, even featuring some cameos from big name YouTubers Jack Septicai, Ross from Game Grumps, and even PewDiePie himself. I'm not gonna say it like he says it, cause I have dignity, and not a lot of subscribers like he does either or money. If I say it like he says it, do I get those things? I'll do it. These characters help offer support to Teddy as he travels through this hauntingly beautiful imagination of hell. The story and visuals of this game are definitely the standout reasons to give this game a try. They are set counter to some very simple puzzles and unsatisfying platforming. Pinstripe markets itself as an adventure game on Steam, but it is certainly one that relies heavily on 2D platforming. As far as controls go, I have certainly played with more well-polished mechanics. The platforming feels inconsistent, some jumps feeling overly challenging simply because they weren't placed well, while other areas have what I can only assume were unintentional shortcuts. They are at least functional enough throughout the game. While at times possibly being a minor annoyance, they never go so far as to make the game unplayable or completely unfun. They just remain throughout the game, kind of popping up at random moments and leaving just as quick. These platforming pieces don't really seem to escalate in difficulty either. They're just something you have to do at times. The same with the puzzles. While I enjoyed some of the puzzles in the game, I felt as if they were all fairly easy. This maybe makes the game more accessible to a younger audience, but I never at any point felt like that's what Pinstripe wanted to do. There remain a pretty constant difficulty from start to finish. This lack of difficulty curve in an already fairly short game, about three hours to complete on your first playthrough, does not help with the overall pacing of the game. It makes the game feel even shorter, as if it ends before we ever got to the actual challenging portions. Luckily, the story doesn't share this pacing problem. We slowly uncover a tragic backstory leading up to a climactic final battle. A climactic battle, story-wise. From a gameplay perspective, it's actually one of the most bland boss battles I've ever played. It's tedious, it's slow, and it can just pretty much be summed up as uninspired. It is also the only boss battle, and one of the few bits of combat at all throughout the entire game. It's a weird shift for a game that spends most of its time having you explore and solve puzzles to these few bits of Mario style jump on their head combat, or in this case, jump on their ass combat. This of course set apart from the even more different final battle which is more of a shooting and dodging style fight. There's just no consistency here. These mechanics, like many throughout the game, feel shoehorned in and unpolished, as if the developer was focusing on quantity over quality. Back to the story though. Our main motivation is retrieving Bo, the young child who really has no personality apart from being a small child. Maybe I'm just cynical, but I just don't feel that we really have enough time to learn about Bo for me to personally be invested in getting her back. Apart from the fact that she's a kidnapped child, you should always get your kidnapped children back. There's some solid character development here through our main character, Teddy. Teddy has a very intriguing backstory that kept me interested in the game. Piecing together the tragedy in Teddy's life that have led up to his placement here in this bizarre hellscape was captivating to me throughout. Where the other characters failed to capture my interest for long, and the plot itself felt cliched and unoriginal, Teddy stands out as a driving force of curiosity for the player. The plot itself was not terrible, just something I felt was too familiar. A basic get the girl back, get revenge, earn your redemptions type story. So. In conclusion, is Pinstripe worth the buy? Well, at $15, 
I'm kind of torn, but leaning towards no. From a gameplay standpoint, this game is a barely pass. If you are particularly drawn to story-driven and narrative-based games, you might have some fun with this one, as well as if you just wanted to have a little adventure in a Tim Burton knockoff. It's poor pacing and lack of variety of game mechanics just didn't do it for me. Overall, I could recommend this game if it was on sale, maybe $10 or less, but until then, personally, I'm gonna have to say it's a pass. But hey, that's just my opinion on the game. If you've played Pinstripe, please share with us down below in the comments section what you thought of the game. As always, I love your beautiful faces, and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye.